inside where he can see it. We grab from this end the outside, go right to the pressure point on the ring finger, and we twist and push. Pulling to our breast, push down, drop into a cat. We have to watch him don't throw him into that paper. Mm. Or you'll rip it. You guys fall and can't fall that direction. Or you'll rip the paper. So pushing either with one hand or two hands, you trap the hand. Come in behind, grabbing the wrist points. And you should concentrate, which we ought to take a picture of this, on that part of the grappling. If we get the little finger to here, it makes our opponent weak. All we need to do is put the little finger just behind the ring finger and press, not only in this point, but here at the same time. Kim's going to try to get a picture of this, so I'm going to twist and put you in a little pain, and that's how you get the picture. We also can use the hard cheat point. We call that a cheat point right inside because we can put our thumb in here and put pressure for grappling. It intensifies the pain. Because it messes up, it messes with the energy flow coming down the small bone side across the fist and back, and you're really messing with the energy flow right here. And when you twist this way, it puts a lot more pain into the pressure point. Ready, Kim? Come on up, back up. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Where's my double? We'll do this. <laughs> stunt double, stunt double. <laughs> stunt double. <laughs> this is union my job. Contract. This is my dollar being <laughs> saved. That's right. Okay, you're ready. Well, right. right. We use our opponent's belt, and it's even better if it is a metal buckle or some kind of buckle that sticks out. Uh, the karate belts today are soft. So we'd like to not to be firm if you're going to use it. But we push right into the center, just be two inches below the belly button is a pressure point that's going to make our opponent bend over. And if we push in this manner, that's the meaning of this move. That's the meaning of that move. It makes the opponent respond like that backwards by piercing into uh, the conception line. And it hurts him more if he is grabbing because he stretches stretches all the nerves all up through the body, just pulls everything nice and tight for me, and we pierce right into here, which would just put that person out and down. And we use his belt, actually, against him, and or our fingertips for this particular move. Okay. That thing hanging down won't be in this, will it? No. <clears throat> the move when the kata start out like this are... Uh, Basically, they're from an attack that grabbed you like this and got you real up close. <clears throat> of course, these pressure points now come up for information to find out <clears throat> what's going on here. But there's uh, about two inches away from the belly button on either side, stomach points. These stomach points come up for attack and the angle is down and in at a 45 degree. Down and in, sorry, <clears throat> 45 degree, which lunges his head forward so that you may snap, punch the neck or the head area at any time. You do this. That's not bad. <clears throat> when somebody grabs you by the wrist, and you start flopping around like this, that's, that sends a message to the brain, so either he's going to hit you a lot quicker than he anticipated it, or he's going to start wrestling with you. So this actually sends a message to the brain that somebody's in trouble. <clears throat> Normally what will happen is he'll tighten up with this wrist and that hand will come out to do his striking. <clears throat> like a good fish, you're out fishing, right? And you, you find that there's a, a, a fish hitting your bait, you want to jerk it, right? Or you got to be like a good fish. 
You just gotta run and just nibble around the bait. So now the guy's out there fishing with a piece of uh, iron, <laughs> just a hook. So what you want to do is you want to step up to here, which your brain didn't sense anything, even when you knew it was coming. Down, and then you can strike the back. So move in a kata. The move in a kata brings this hand up. But with the step here, you get this thumb also with the arm on either TW17 or uh, TW12 uh, or 11. You can either vibrate them down. At this moment, you step back, stretch them out, hammer fist. Explain what you're doing. Okay, what we're going to do is he's going to grab the arm, same side arm grab. This comes out of Tayuka 1, got it. I'm going to raise the arm up, which is going to allow me to peel this off. I'm going to use the cheek point here and the point on the back of his hand. And then if I turn, it's going to lower him more to where I can strike the triple warmer behind the jaw with my down block. Which is the reason for this? For this and the turn and the down block. And that will knock him out. This is not a technical one. Ooh, particularly like this. As he reaches around to grab you, <clears throat> you stop, pinch the wrist on the heart point to your body. Stepping out, holding the wrist to your bosom, going down on TW11, letting go, stepping and punching to the first points in the uh, head area. Well, remember that the kata takes in situations where you might screw up. So, <clears throat> to the previous move, what if your hand was up and he got a hold of it this way? Underneath. Underneath. That's why this hand's down. As, as, as this hand's down, you pin here, grabbing the fingers, manipulating, of course, all the hand pressure points, stepping back, following through to the pressure points that you know in the brain, on the head area. That light tone is up there. Anytime we do a, uh, a head grab, we divide the head into four. We have the four sections. Anytime you try to grab and pull somebody's hair from this side, they can resist you. Anytime you try to pull their hair from that side, they can resist you. But if you reach into the opposite quadrangle, in the back, they cannot resist the head turn. And when somebody grabs you, we strike the points with the dots inside the arm. And it'll bend not only the arm, but it'll put the head within grab range. In case the hair is too short, you can do the throw by the ear, but it's dangerous because we, you can peel or rip the ear off because you are to do the small circle on the ear, twisting as you turn to bring that ear down. And it's going to put the person in a lot of pain, and there is a chance of ripping the ear off. Uh, recently at a seminar, I had a, a big lumberjack grab me, and I said, grab me, and he grabbed me with two arms, and the strike to the arms didn't bring the head down. He could take the shock. So what I did was I actually put one hand on the other, and I pushed right off the, the, the inside on the lung point so, so that this happened, so that he did come down for me to grab him. So I put the fist on it, pushed here, grabbed the head, and then went for my turn, for my strike. So, I'd also advise, even we do a move where we drop down and empty behind the arm, if I ever had somebody grab me that I couldn't drop with even that, then again you can drop your weight and leap to the, to, to the floor. But we put it on here, it puts the head right within grab range. And then, I was taught any time somebody grabs your arm, any time they grab your arm anywhere, if you automatically bend your elbow, that's where there's so many elbow bends in katas, so you just automatically bend your elbow, they can't hold on. I mean, it's just simple. And even the katas that turn 45 degrees 
or a full turn to the side with what people think is a side block. You're not side blocking because you wouldn't use the bone side of your arm, you'd use the muscle. You wouldn't use the bone side. Is someone grabbing you in the elbow region? When they grab you in the elbow region, if you just bend and cock your arm, you put them in an automatic lock, you force their little finger to go like this in behind, you put them in a lock right off the arm that they can't resist, and the more you turn, it exposes them to a full power punch to the kidney or floating rib area. So all you do is you put them in a lock in that arm. So that's why a lot of katas will have a turn, either 45 degrees like that, or a full turn, and if he grabs that arm, it doesn't matter. All you need to do is put the squeeze, and you'll see that the little finger will just fold right up and put it into a lock and throw them. Anytime anybody grabs your upper arm, right up to the shoulder, anywhere from the elbow to the shoulder, all you need to do is, is spin your arm to the outside and come up on top of their arm. You trap, you stretch the ulnar nerve. As you pull your arm down into your own breast, you'll put a lot of pain on them this way, and you strike. If you have any difficulty, and maybe you're small, you get to here, you can always use the other hand to pull, which you have to watch because you can break the wrist or the thumb with that action, and then you pull them into that strike. If you make a rule of thumb that any time anybody grabs you from the elbow down and then anywhere, they can grab you anywhere, all you need to do is bend your elbow and you're out of the situation. I mean, it sounds like uh, uh, something great, but the person can be very strong, twice as big, twice as strong as you, and he cannot stop you from bending your own elbow. He can grab you with one, this works on one hand grab, two hand grab, it, he can grab either hand, he can hold as tight as he wants. The minute I do this with my elbow, I'm out of the situation. So, I mean, he can just, it's very, it takes no power. Anybody can do this type of routine. So anytime you grab, from there to there, with either hand, one hand, two hands, two hand to grab, hold good and tight. Well, he cannot stop me from bending my elbow. All I have is this. I'm out of the situation, and I have him in a reverse where I can just lock up on that joint. If he grabs with two hands, and he can grab up at the elbow, or he can grab anywhere like that, he cannot stop me from bending my own elbow, and again, I put my squeeze on him, and I use the pressure points. When I go after him, I lock on a pressure point with my thumb, or I use my forefinger. So anytime, one hand out of it, two, uh, one hand on the uh, other side, hold tight, all you need to do is like bend, I come right out of it, and I got him in reverse. It's a simple technique. A lot of people will teach that if you grab to, to come out with the thumbs, that's great, but my momentum is going that way. If he pushes me, I'll fly over backwards. Also, if I pull out this way, we're kind of even. Suppose he's a better fighter than I am. Also, with my techniques, anytime they grab, I am closing towards my opponent to, to disable or stop him instantly. Grab with two hands. He holds with two hands. I'm out here. I have him in the technique for the strike or the joint lock. We're going to be doing some moves from Sayushan. At the beginning of the form, what would be considered bow as you step out, could actually be used as defense against a push or a shove. And what you're going to do is trap the hand in against the bosom. And the first part of the kata steps out. So you're going to be stepping out and you're going to be torquing the hand, pushing on the little finger to activate that particular nerve plexus. And you step in onto the foot, if you're in that close, and you take the man to here. And it doesn't really matter if it's up here, it's down here, just as long as it's locked, create a base with it, to add a little bit more, and then, of course, your follow up moves to here. Be the reason why they have to do Moving on with another application from Sayishan, you have an attack coming in from the rear, and so when you're working with this particular movement, you would actually be blocking the bear hug to turn it again, they'll come back around. So as the bear hug comes around, grapple with the hands, gauge both hands here. And what you're going to be doing is stepping back through, locking the arm into an arm bar this way, and then you can follow through with any number of movements as a follow-up. Um, let me see. Another variation on the theme. 
comes around again. This time I'm going to grab them this way. And I don't want to go that way. I'm sorry. I'm going to move back your tape off to do what I wanted to do. There you go. So it comes around. Air hug. And we come back. And as we do the arm bar, we're going to do a reverse leg sweep, which puts him right down. There isn't too much he can do about the movement there because he can only concentrate one area of his body at a time. You should be in your bare feet. Okay, we have a, it, the same kind of bear hug coming around. Uh, if you don't get both hands, you can just grab one, and you just basically spin out into that very first technique. And again, as you can see, we're still activating on that little finger. And again, we're bringing it into the body to create a base, and we just exert a little pressure. In Siyuchin Kata, you lower down, your feet are aimed out, and your hands pull up and they come out. Now, there's several different versions. Some they come like this. Some they'll even bring the hands up back to back. And people ask me, what's the back to back? Well, I say, the hands go down. I say, what's the next move in that particular kata? And their hands will come in this manner back. They'll come with a ridge hand this way. And then they'll do a spear hand. And they seem to think that they're blocking another opponent. This is getting somebody off the throat. They already understand and they're bringing them down, but then they seem to think that they're blocking another opponent, which is not the case. What that move is, is someone is grabbing you by the throat, and you play a two-way action with their muscles. As you come up through reverse, you push up this way, which will almost release the hole, but then you manipulate the two pressure points on both sides of the wrist, and you pull down and out like this. And then what you do is when the hand is coming, you use that knuckle, the large knuckle, to tap in behind the jaw back to front. If you're still holding over here as you're supposed to be, he's going to pass out going down face first. And you would hit that direction. And if there was any chance that that missed, the ridge hand would catch you right upside the nose or the other side of the jaw. So you're hitting the man that direction, you're hitting that direction, and you're showing how to grab the head to spear and kill him. And when we spear to kill, we go in through what we call the hollow pocket. Right beside the Adam's apple, there's a pathway that will take you right into major nerves. And you can spear right into nerves. And that would kill your opponent. Go. Your wife. Death. Action. Action. Right. Oh. Oh, man. show now is, is just a grappling technique. It can be off of one, one hand reaching, two hands, it doesn't matter. What you do is as he's coming, you, you catch like this, just right up to your chest. You take your right hand, brush across the long point, and underneath, pull him down, and then take your left arm, and you're going to tap large intestine, and then fire in for the strike. All right. All right, here's the same technique, just from a different angle. He comes in with the shove, I catch, brush across, dive this through, pull the elbows down, and then I'm going to tap and fire. All right, we're going to show a grappling technique off of a cross hand grab. He grabs, I take my thumb, and I dig in this large intestine point, angle in direction this way. I step in towards the opponent. I'm going to knee him in the liver, and I'm going to hit him in the liver with the elbow. As I pass through, apply torquage and strike the liver. Oh, okay. I can't grab. Here's the same technique, just from a different angle. I'm going to cut in here, and then I'm going to grab the, the heart point inside the palm. Step in, knee, elbow. Right through now, little twist. Uh, uh. What we're going to demonstrate now are some grabs from behind. And these are grabs that are when someone comes and grabs the shoulder. And there's a couple of key points that need to be remembered as we go through. When the grab comes, you don't know which hand has grabbed you, you just know which side. And so you're going to turn toward that side. The other important thing to remember is that the 
when we move, we're going to move and raise the arm above the head, and it has to come above the head and then lock down tightly on the forearm of the opponent, and you have to squeeze the elbow into the body. You can't let loose or you can get out. Once you've got him in here, he's not going anywhere. Then you can follow through to here, to here, or down into here. So it's up to you how you want to follow up. But the th key thing is, again, bring your hand way up over, lock that arm tight into the body, and then you can come in for your follow-up. So we'll show you a couple different variations. Man's grab. In here, it doesn't matter which way I go, I've got it. Okay? Also, if, do the same thing again. If he comes the same way, I, I'm here to cover as I come around. And this hand is way up over into here for my follow through. Okay, now if he comes in with both hands, you really have the option to go either way. I'm going to go this way. And what you want to try to do is lock up both arms, have an immediate follow through here or into here. Okay, here are some techniques uh, out of common kata. I guess a cross hand grab. It is to step in this way, strike to soften him up, and then move the hand here. You'll notice that the little finger comes loose. Take the little finger and the ring finger, take it right into the shoulder this way. Now, if I want to hit him, what I do is send him in that direction and strike. This is from the kata called Say Sound. The movies here. One, two, three. In this next sequence, attacker throws a punch. We parry it here and grab it. And try to give a little bend to the wrist. <clears throat> Not by bending the wrist, but by striking. And I'm with this hand going to catch up here by the elbow on the large intestine point, bend the arm into his head, step forward, <coughs> hit him with his own hand a couple times. And now turn this way. <coughs> Lifting up against his bent wrist to create a lot of strain on the wrist. Now the idea for safety, take him all the way down and then I lift up afterwards. But to hurt, you throw and lift while he's still in the air. So he lands with his body weight going one way and his hand supported from another. In the kata save chain, that's a movement that looks like this, like this, here, and then with a the turn. Also from the kata state chain, the ending movement of the kata in one version is here, this way, like this. If somebody grabs one hand, first move here, I take the wrist, and I strike it there against his elbow. I'm going to turn his little finger up, and at the same time as I turn his little finger up, punch. I've got his little finger up, I'm going to step forward and drop down on his forearm. Strike him in the back of the head. So again, that's here. One, two, turn it up, strike down, strike there. The kata movement is one, two, three. If he grabs with the other hand, using a very similar idea, strike it here, strike here. Now take the hand this way, step forward, and drop the elbow on the triple warmer point on the hand, and strike to the back of the head. Kata Chinto. There's a movement in the Kata Chinto which is executed this way. One, step back, do what appears to be a reinforced downward block, but in fact, the opponent is facing you. You strike him on the side of the head to get him loose. Take the top of the head, the bottom of the jaw. In the Kata, the step is this way, but using a small circle principle, I'm going to turn in the same direction, pivot on the other foot here, to take him down. Here's a movement from the kata kushanku, using the opening section this way. And then this technique, front kick, and this is a particular version that drops down to one knee. As he comes with two hands to grab or push, we parry, we take one hand with a little bit of bend in the wrist, there's a chop here, and kick to the leg. Using a similar movement 
from that kata, a different version of the kata, this time here, kicking, coming this way. As he pushes with both hands, slam his wrists together, and grab this hand by the little finger side, digging into the heart eight point. It's right here, turning the little finger up, kick, and step through. Aim his fingers at his own face, and that's taking right there. We do that one again slowly from a different angle. He pushes, smashes the wrist together, take the hand here and strike up. Strike the leg, inside the leg. Step through this way. Pressing in on hard eight, little fingers up, I aim the little finger towards his face, and I pull it back into my body. That's the pressure. You can drop him down, or you can lift him up. As you wish. That same locking technique can be reached from behind. If someone reaches around to grab, strike. I reach across to grab the little finger side of the hand, take it over my head, towards his face, and pull it down. This next technique is actually a drill to get the feeling of moving from thing to thing. Now, the kata techniques use striking as a way of getting to a joint lock. You hit to strike, or you strike to hit. But this is a way of just going from one joint lock to another, flowing as it is. He grabs this way. The first thing I do is what's called a palm twist. In basic two, he tell you that's this move right here, which can be done this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, or this way. It's all the same movement. And against the closed hand, it's the same way. I'm going to press this part of his hand into my chest, put pressure on the little finger side of his hand, and give him a little twist. Down he goes. When I release the pressure, I can then bend the arm into this position. S shape. Two bends. Elbow and wrist is bent. Press down here. To get more effect, press down on the large intestine point at the elbow. Once he's down, we release that pressure, turn his hand this way. Now I've taken from the heart point with my fingers, even at his face. I can pull it up into what's called Daisankyo, behind, into what's called Mochiwari, right here, as I had before. And then I can reach around this way to grab the meat of the thumb. I come down, I come up. Let's that from another angle. He grabs, I turn. I turn this way, 45 degrees while he presses this in, he goes down. I turn it up this way, he goes down. I reach around, take him up, dice you. Towards his face, lock his out, take the meat of his thumb, and drop him straight on his back. We're going to be doing a uh, technique against the grit eye. Hand grabbing the head, or hair, as we come up working on heart line, we're going to be rubbing with the middle knuckle across the metacarpals on the heart line, on the natural energy flow. So he grabs, you grab up here, rub, technique. We know that the energy naturally flows down the small bone, across the hand and back up. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the middle knuckle and rubbing it across the metacarpal and torquing on the heart point here. As he grabs, twist, and punch. Good move. We have a move in uh, Karabasai that just comes here and then the hands come across like this, and then just the hammer fist comes out. Naturally sideways means to turn sideways on your opponent to get this little knuckle to strike right in behind the ear. So I'm going to show that move on the war. And actually, I've explained this in many videos, but it's, it's like impossible to push somebody's hands out because of the strength of the shoulder, arm, and muscle, and, and uh, the muscle of the chest, the back, the shoulder, and the arm. You can't push out. But regardless of the strength, they can't stop you from doing this to them. 
And when a person's pushing you, his strength or energy is coming this way. So as he goes to push, we just cross the hands and put it down to here, and we would strike with this on the way down, so that he would be running into that, that hammer fist. So what happens is, as the hands come in, we just push across. We just take and just push inward like that. We have the single right hand exposed. We take the little finger, make sure it goes behind. We lock, we get him to here. As he's going down, we would strike with the hammer fist into a full side position, pulling that hand. And it's going to drop the opponent. This is a move out of Kusanko. Here, comes around. Some styles will smash the fist like this, or like this. <clears throat> Our interpretation is as he pushes, you come up. Now, one way or the other, you, you may lose a hand, and it doesn't matter because you just keep rotating the same one in, smashing on pericardium, then following up with a strike to the neck. We'll do it one time. <coughs> Okay, most styles have a move in the kata that actually just comes with both hands climbing somewhere up in this vicinity. Then they bring in a knee and they turn the opposite direction with what they call shudo blocks. And that was one of the moves I always question in a pinon four or whatever. When you are doing this and you're turning this way, how do you know that that person's there? How do you know he's going to punch? And people tell you that you're bringing the head down to attack it with the knee. And that's actually wrong. I'm going to show this move on two different people because if the same move is done on the same person, he's going to get sick. And, and what I want to do is bring Warren out here. And you don't have to, you don't, if a person's grabbing at you, you don't have to worry about where you grab up here. And you're never going to be able to pull this guy's head. You just resist me. You're no, resist me. You're never going to be able to pull this person's head down to your knee. We have what we call wood meridian or the liver meridian, where if I do this, his head will come down to my knee. So all I need to do is connect with the proper point with this move. Now that particular move in the kata, you can step back, now you come here. <laughs> if a man is grabbing at you, what that move is doing, if he grabs you, you're hitting on stomach points where you have two energies coming down, one from the eye, one from the temple, and they meet right here. And if you really did this on both sides, the person is going to pass out. You are really connecting up and back that way, striking both stomach, catching them in the leg, and turning the other way to break the person's neck. So that is one of the easiest examples to show somebody how a move in a kata was created to kill somebody. Because you are to hit him, knock him out, take his own feet out from under them, and use his body weight falling to just turn with his head. So you're not turning around to block an unknown punch. You're, you're doing further damage to the man that's in front of you. Go. I've, I've been behind closed doors where Okinawan people practiced squeezing. We practiced. And we would catch kicks in between the legs. I don't necessarily believe in that theory, and I wouldn't use that. I don't believe in a street situation. However, I know a few Okinawan masters that you cannot kick in the groin area. They stand and just practice and practice, and the kick will come and get caught, and get caught, and get caught. And the kick will be harder and harder, and they build the timing. So they stand and practice that the same way a lot of martial artists practice the front punch. They practice so you cannot catch, with the cat stance, the kick. Now there's a lot of kata moves that involve the cat, then they involve this which everybody says is the crane stance. But the crane stance then has a turn like that as the hands strike down. And people ask me about that move in tournaments, and they say, that's a micata, it has to have a meaning. If you've been practicing groin kicks and lock it, they lift the back leg as this sets to put the lock on the leg, and it'll turn the opponent that way. And they strike him in the floating rib as he turns, or they stretch his arm as they strike. It's a move that requires practice, but it's that meaning of a move in a kata. And I'm sure Chris Thomas will tell you that that pulls the nerve all the way up the leg, right into the lower abdominal region. And they catch it, we'll do it in slow motion. They catch, trap, 
behind crane, stretcher pull, strike, but this is why that crane stands and why that turn. We have grappling with the hands. That's grappling with the legs. And they believe you should be able to leg grapple as well as hand grapple. So they'll practice the hunchian. It turns the person. One of my black belts, uh, Will Higginbottom, does a knockout from that because he'll do the hunchy, catch somebody in the trap, and he punches them down into the stomach meridian, and they pass out. Because he twists them so that he's activating the stomach right here. The stomach meridian comes up the front of the shin, and he'll fire down into the stomach from this angle and direction and get somebody to pass out. On grappling, we've explained that uh, Okinawan people feel, at least the ones I've studied with, you should be able to grapple as well with the legs as you can with the hands, because everybody pays attention to all this up here. But they'll lock with you with this, just movement in a kata of turning. There'll be kata that moves from here to here. Pasai does that at the end of it. You'll step one way, you'll pivot the other. You'll step one way and you'll pivot the other. What you're to be doing is locking with the inside of the foot. Tapping at the ankle. You're to drop that knee just beyond his knee. Now, if you have my videotape six, I have the knee points marked very well. All you need to do is drop your body and pick up, which is the proper angle and direction for the lower knee point. I drop, I pick up. My opponent turns that way and can be hit with a move just out of the kata. So what happens is just the pivot, it's a lock, in behind, finish. You all know from my previous tapes, a man can't resist a two-way action. And what we do, we do one that's called a Mexican, it looks like a Mexican hat dance. But it's the reason kata moves will go like that, and they will shift. You'll hit a move, you'll shift a move. If I tap inside on the liver, I'm tapping actually down and that way. When I skip back, if I connect out that way, the opponent will almost go down from the knees. It hits him on the point, and you quick reverse to the outside point, the knee can't take it. Done fast action. I studied uh, with a man that actually could do that so quick, he'd break your leg. You grabbed him in close, he would just skip his knee. Touch you, skip, and down you go. Another one that we use, I just did this, I'm going to show this in slow motion as you can. He has the right, his right leg is sore because we, we pulled this up and he screamed going down. But what happens is, the counter, if a guy tries to lock you to take your knee, all you do is aim that direction and sit down. And you'll have him locked in as much pain as you want because I'm on both feet, am I not? Yeah. Yes. This is grabbing with one arm. Had to grab me with two arms, I could be on the outside of the bone. I want to be on the inside of the bone, and I want to cut like this. I'll do it when I really do the routine. I will cut back towards me with this. This one will come down on stomach point five. What does that look like? <coughs> augmented block, doesn't it? Yes? Yes. It's an augmented block. This will take out this. This will take out stomach five. And he's taller, so it'll be a little taller than the kata. In an actual kata, you're practicing finding somebody your own size, so the hand will be in the right position. So what I gotta do is you keep the jaw shut. We connect with this this way, this this way, just like in the top. See some corn? Look at this view. Now they're going back. Now what I'm doing is, is bringing them back and restoring the energy. And restoring the energy. That was the top of stomach five struck down. 
next uh, dump, bar fights will start when somebody pushes you or grabs you, and this is a way to get out of it. And what you do is if the guy were to grab me and he's going to get in my face and tell me what he's going to do to me. Explain what you do first. I'm then going to take and reach over. If he's too far away from me, I can take and bring him into me. I can take and grab his hair from the opposite quadrangle and turn it. I can put my forehead against his and tap him back here and he will go down. If he doesn't go down, you still have complete control of him to continue to bring him to the floor and strike. So. If he grabs me, he pulls me in close, I bring him back here for my forehead. Beautiful. So I start it towards Kim. <laughs> See all the way back, that arm stretched out weird. Is he okay? Yeah. Does that one put you right out to sleep? And with a full twist? Wasn't that good? Yeah. Okay. To make it a lot easier for me, if I could strike the arm, bring him in, and tap the foot to the back of the head. Okay? So he grabs, I tap the arms here, bring him in, and touch the point to the back of the head. style, modern our knees, where one hand goes, comes high, and as this one goes down, the other hand comes high. So it's a high-low motion. So if someone were to reach out to grab or reach out to strike, I'll parry the arm with this hand, and as I push it down, and this hand's coming high, I'm going to tag to the shoulder. Okay, so if, as if he reached out, hit the arm.
gonna be what? Some of you have to be over here to be watching the eyes. It looks like they're sitting down, but you just see the eyes roll. The eyes go right back into their head. Hold on that second.